welcome to volume 50 of Ask a Brit. This is, of course, the format in which I ask you fine people to ask me any question you like, so long as you use this hashtag. And so long as you use the theme that was laid out at the end of last week's episode. Now, as I just mentioned, this is volume 50. So to commemorate uh, that very number, the theme this week is the 50 United States. And we've got a lot of questions coming in from you fine people. And of course, uh, it, uh, it relates rather to what I do on this channel uh, in many ways, because I, of course, as I've said many a time, I'm trying to get to all 50 states. And on that note, a big thank you to uh, Nicholas Kurtz, who this week pledged 60 dollars on Patreon. And what that means is we are now at our most recent goal of $300. So of course, as ever, if you would like to support this channel and our endeavors to all of the 50 states, as well as our other shows, if you like Distant Words and this very show, Ask a Brit, uh, please feel free to support us at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Every penny really does help uh, go into the show. It's not all just about uh, the travel to the states and the travel costs, but the things like the editing and the writing as well. Uh, any any funds that can support that are very, very welcome. So thanks again to Nicholas. And so without further ado, let's get underway with your questions about the 50 United States. Okay, so first up, I had a kind of a variation on a theme here with uh, multiple people asking me sort of a similar question. Uh, Chris J asks, I know you plan to visit all 50 states, but if you could only visit 49 and had to skip one, uh, what's the one state you would skip? Uh, that's, that's putting me on the spot there, Chris, right from the, uh, the off. Um, I'm going to cop out, though, and say Indiana. And the very reason is I've lived there before for eight years, and I've also done two Finding America videos on it. Um, you know, there's so much to see in Indiana. There's more that I could do, in fact, and probably will. Uh, but if I had to choose, it would be that, only because I already have experience of it. Similar question, uh, really, from Kilimanjaro. Uh, Kilimanjaro asks, are there any states that you have reservations about visiting based on reputation alone? And is there a state that you are saving for a particular time, i.e. save the best till last? There aren't really any that um, whose you know reputations are putting me off in, in many ways. They're, they're uh, enticing me even more, like a carrot dangling in front of me. I don't like carrots, uh, so that's probably not a good comparison. But, um, you know, I think I, I've said it before, you know, I do want to see all of the 50 states. It never ceases to amaze me how this country never ceases to amaze me. And in fact, the world, I think that everywhere has the capacity to surprise or has the capacity to open your eyes to something you didn't know about that place, rather, whether it be historic, whether it be of the present day, whether it be anything, you know. And, uh, and I think that's it. So, no, there's nothing on, on reputation that puts me off, I don't think. I'm not somebody who lives uh, in fear, I don't think, of, of much, really, uh, except heights. So maybe uh, I, uh, my own reputation for having a fear of heights puts me off the Grand Canyon, but then at the same time, that's one of the places I most want to visit. And uh, as for saving the best until last, I think I've said this before, I don't think it's a case of saving the best till last, because that would, you know, undermine uh, the quality of all of the other places that the United States has to offer. But it's, it's often been on my mind that either Hawaii or Alaska, for geographical reasons, might well be the last that we do visit. That might not even be the case. I mean, I didn't think I'd be going to California this year, much less Boise, uh, Idaho. So um, sometimes things might crop up that surprise you that are kind of outside of our strategy. And our strategy is to sort of work out from the nucleus, which is Chicago, to the states that are nearest and then just keep building out from there. It just happens that I was already going on a business trip to Idaho and there's a family thing going on in San Francisco. So uh, that happened there. Um, so who knows? Maybe I'd get to Hawaii sooner. It, it, it could be somewhere. Surpri it could even be Iowa. Who knows? I mean, I live right next to Iowa, so I have no excuses. And I've promised a lot of you Iowans that I will be there uh, at some point um, soon. But uh, you just never know. Uh, it, you know, life is what happens while you're busy making other plans. That didn't really fit in this context, but that's fine. OK, but speaking of the states, let's rattle now through uh, some questions that are specific to some particular states. 
Okay, D Cool 814 asks, uh, did you know that Delaware, Maine, Vermont, West Virginia, and Wyoming are the only states that don't have a city with 100,000 people or more? I didn't, but I can almost imagine it. I'd heard uh, stories of Wyoming in particular, uh, you know, a, a state that has, I think, about half a million people and, in fact, has more cows than people. I've heard that. I've not uh, checked out Snopes yet to see if that is true or not. Uh, I almost don't want to because it's a fascinating fact that, if true, uh, is mind-boggling in many ways. Um, but I'm not surprised, actually, by some of the states you list, because among those, uh, Maine, Vermont, and Wyoming specifically, when I put out that ornery survey just recently, and, and by the way, we do have a video coming on that very soon with a, an astounding uh, finding, but more on that later. Um, when I put that out, we got about 1,300 different responses and multiple responses per state, right? But the, those three states that I just mentioned, Maine, Vermont, and Wyoming, uh, unfortunately, we just didn't have enough responses to constitute a data set. Uh, so when you see the map that I will be putting out uh, in the uh, ornery findings video, uh, those states unfortunately are blacked out. Not because I have anything against them, it's just that um, we didn't uh, garner the, the, the requisite number of responses. Um, so that tells me, I think, that uh, you know they are sparsely populated perhaps or uh, that uh, they, they just don't like my channel and therefore don't get my uh, my, my, my videos. Um, although I know that's not true because I know there, are, there were three or four of you in those states um, but I couldn't take the results of three or four people and 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 sort of apply that as a, a, a pattern that was more or less statewide it was it was difficult for me to do that so no not surprised to find that there aren't cities with a hundred thousand people or more in their, those states uh, Gloria asks have you been to Maine and if so do you think their accent is similar to a northern British accent so I think historically it may have been I think there was a lot of influence on the east coast uh, going back I'm sure there are still um, elements of it that are there perhaps uh, vocabulary in nature or uh, maybe certain pronunciation but when I visited and I visited Portland um, I also dated somebody from there and then that's why I was visiting in fact at the time um, I didn't detect anything that clued me into it. I will say this though um, I I suppose I wasn't really looking for it like I would be now it, it wasn't sort of you know high on my uh, list of things to do because I wasn't doing this show back then you know um, and it, it was just going there and taking in the state really and I must say I, I find Maine to be a very beautiful place um, but I just I can't really remember off the top of my head what their accents like okay next question is from Selena W and uh, Selena asks what would be the biggest difference uh, that you two that's me and Tara uh, have realized between living in Indianapolis versus Chicago hands down the hugest difference at least for me as somebody who doesn't drive uh, has to be the access to public transit here I think well, one thing I really missed living in Indiana not just Indianapolis but Fort Wayne Anderson and and all of that was uh, was a good train you know the only train I think I've, I've ridden on in the state of Indiana is the Amtrak train to Chicago um, and so you know getting about was was tricky I mean the wife drives so that was handy but yeah, at times I felt like she was my chauffeur or that I gave her that impression and you lot uh, so now there's it's a bit more equal we both catch the train I love to cycle here too it's a very uh, pedestrianized city in that regard um, you will see uh, they rent a bikes uh, everywhere although I believe they have those in Indianapolis now too uh, which is really nice but I have my own bike which has a bloody puncture which is a flat tire uh, tire with a y or an i it depends how you want to spell it um and so yeah mainly it's transportation of course the city size is vastly different well not vastly different but um quite quite different um I would say um so now switching gears from the midwest over to the west coast bring it Jeff Lichtman, uh, referencing my upcoming visit to San Francisco, asks, do you want to visit anywhere in California other than San Francisco? I bloody do, mate. I bloody do. Um, so, you know, maybe Los Angeles, sure, you know, and some of the other sort of well-known cities. But one or rather two of the places that stand out to me in California are not cities at all. They are, in fact, national parks, the first of which is Yosemite. Um, I think, you know, firstly, before I moved to America and I became more aware of um, just sort of place names and geography and all all of that. Um, firstly, I called Yosemite uh, Yosemite, uh, or at least in my head. I don't think I ever said it out loud, thank goodness. If I did,
did, then, you know, I'm sure people would retroactively correct me on that. Um, but I, I also never imagined that Yosemite was in California. I think the vision that us Brits have of California is, you know, um, beaches and, and palm trees, just as we do of Florida. More on that here in a, in a moment. Um, never really thought of it for its sort of natural splendor. But of course, it is full of natural splendor. And Yosemite is a fine example of that. Uh, just looking at some of its uh, you know, rock faces and all of that. Uh, and Yosemite is high on my list of to-dos. I, I wish I could almost visit it um, when we go out to San Francisco um, in June. Um, it's just it's not on the itinerary, unfortunately, but we will definitely be going back there at some point. And, uh, and similarly, Sequoia National Park, which is also, of course, part of California and famous for its uh, beautiful sequoia trees, um, can't wait to see all that i think uh, a big part of my love for this country as i've pointed out before uh, goes back to its um its natural beauty and its natural diversity uh, which you see right across the land i mean as i said earlier i i visited maine and on route to maine uh, went through new hampshire was astounded just by the sight of mount washington right and uh, and thought that was good enough for me but no it's not um, I want to see more of it. So that would be the aspect of California outside of San Francisco that I truly want to see. And sticking to the West Coast, Diane Thurman asks, uh, Wenatchee, I presume, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. It sounds like it might be a Native American uh, name, uh, which is in the state of Washington, is called the Apple, capital city of the world by its citizens. Why do you think they do that? So I understand that uh, Wenatchee is renowned for its apple orchards. Uh, so I think that they have uh, convinced themselves, I don't know if there's any statistical uh, basis for this, but uh, convinced themselves that they produce more apples than any uh, any other area in the world. Maybe it's true, I don't know. I do know one thing, when I lived in Fort Wayne, apples stick out to me there because that was the final resting place of Mr. Johnny Appleseed. Look it up if you've not heard the story. Um, and uh, and so apples have a, a slight part uh, in my American history. So uh, when actually... I'll go there, sure, why not, and eat all of the apple and make cider if you do. Do you make cider in Wenatchee? Let me know in the comments below. Actually, this is a good time to announce this, that uh, uh, technically I will be making my first visit to Washington State uh, before I head out to San Francisco because it's one of the uh, connecting flights that happens at Seattle. So I'll only be in the airport, much like with Dallas. Uh, but it's got me thinking, just you know, going off track here a little bit, um, maybe I'll do, as part of the Finding America series, a sort of special on all of the airports that I get laid over at and some of my um, inner monologues that come out while I'm sitting there waiting and eating a pasty. You can't get pasties in the US except in Michigan. This is a good question from Annette Wong. Annette asks, uh, I watch a lot of British TV and notice that Whenever anybody talks about visiting or moving to the US, it's almost always to Florida. Uh, why is this? Do Brits have some special affinity uh, with Florida? I've always found this perplexing. I don't blame you, Annette. Um, it is kind of strange. And in fact, I, I don't know that we have an affinity in terms of sort of a historical significance. I think it's because, firstly, Florida plays into that, uh, that stereotype in people's heads of the aforementioned beaches and palm trees. So firstly, we think it's a proper holiday destination, you know, where you can just lounge out. There's also this belief, and uh, I haven't looked at the statistics, but this belief that the cost of living in, in many parts of Florida is is pretty low, considering it, it offers the aforementioned, I've said aforementioned twice now, I'm starting to sound very pretentious. Uh, I started that a long time ago. Um, but it offers that, and uh, and I think that that, the, that in tandem with the uh, perceived low cost of living is appealing to some but of course it is also home to a lot of tourist destinations like uh, Disney World and um, Air, formerly MGM Studios I understand it has in fact changed its name uh, somebody was telling me that the other day but I can't remember who it was doesn't matter anyway it does matter I mean whoever told me that you matter it's just that uh, I have to get through this rather quickly so for those purposes you don't matter I'll shut up now um, and there are other places Epcot Center you know Kennedy Space Center all of these things I think are fascinating to Brits because as I've said before you growing up in England and watching American films you have this made up idea of what America is it is um, movies and it is movie sets it is you know the whole of American life in our heads plays out to a John, John Williams score and uh, everything is about space exploration and how cool that was in the 60s and uh, ongoing through to now um, so Florida represents a lot of that in a way or at least it presents it to you through a, a sort of uh, tourist um, in, a, in a tourist type way uh, so I think that that probably appeals to a lot of people too 
And you can probably get a lot of sort of package deals too that include all of those aforementioned places. Um, so I think that that's probably it. I mean, it's, you know, you, you're not going to find many magazines about Little Rock, Arkansas in the UK, which is sad. You know, I think that uh, it would be amazing if this country was able to sort of market its uh, s- supposed flyover states um, to to the British people because I think uh, it, it tells a, a bigger story or at least a deeper story than anyone's going to get in Florida not to denigrate Florida though because I bloody loved it when I was 8 years old and I'm sure I'd go back there again maybe not even for Orlando but for some of the other parts up north like Jacksonville uh, but even going down south to Miami and all the places in between Tampa etc etc so okay next question uh, comes from Heath Lafoe and Heath uh, asks, uh, go on, give us a reason why Louisiana is so awesome. So I've never been to Louisiana, uh, can't wait to go. Uh, there are multiple reasons that it's awesome. I think uh, chief among which, of course, it is uh, known for uh, Mardi Gras down in New Orleans, um, which, of course, is a, a world-famous event, and not just here in the US, but it's it's known back in the UK. Uh, one of the, the reasons that Louisiana stands out to me, actually, though, is when I was studying English language, is that um, it, was, uh, it was held up as an example of a, a, a place uh, whose uh, treatment of the English language is so diverse, more diverse almost than any uh, other state in the Union. When I spoke earlier on about roticity, um, you know, Louisiana is a place where certain areas people do drop the R in words like car, but in other areas they don't. And um, there's also elements of uh, Creole uh, in Louisiana, influences of of French. I mean, don't forget that this was purchased from the French uh, during the Louisiana Purchase. And uh, and then there's uh, a big uh, influence as well from African Americans too on the English language in there. So there's there's this, this big uh, you know uh, bucket I suppose of um, uh, linguistic phenomena that would be amazing to check out. That's one reason. And I think reason number three. This is a really silly one. Um, but when I was a kid and I learned all of the the state capitals, Baton Rouge was one of my favourite state capital names. And I think it's because it taught me uh, the French for red which was good, you know, because I'd not learned about the Moulin Rouge at the age of eight, because who would, you know. And I hope that's, that answered your question, uh, Heath. It might not quite have been what you were expecting. Christine Dorman, uh, in the travels that you've made so far, is there any state or city which surprised you? Um, there have been a, a few that have surprised me. Actually, Chicago was one of them, and I'll tell, I'll give you a quick story on that. Visited about five times, right, uh, at the dead of winter, right, and I just thought, I cannot bloody live here. It's nice to be inside. It's nice to go into the museums and all of that, um, but, you know, my fingers are dropping off. I don't think I could live here. The, the moment, uh, or rather the time that it surprised me, was when Tara and I came to, to visit one summer, 2014, and I suddenly realised I could live here six months out of the year. But there have been many other places, you know, that have surprised me. West Virginia surprised me. I, I didn't picture it in my head as being so sort of mountainous, you know. I, I don't know why. I think that I just had this idea that it was more or less flat, arable farmland. And then when we got out here, it's these rolling, beautiful hills. Um, and of course, I, I at this point, I mean, we've said it many a time, I think my my sort of experience of the United States is fairly limited. It's limited to the Midwest and parts of the South and the East Coast and Colorado, randomly. Um, so... Um, I will be able to answer that question in greater detail um, at some point down the road, Christine, but uh, a great question. And the final question today comes from TJ Gengler, or Gengler. And TJ asks, in your travels around the 50 states, are there any particular types of experiences that you're hoping to find? And where do your interests lie? I think my interests lie, weirdly enough, for somebody who's a bit of a homebody now and again when he's, you know, working away on his editing, my my interests lie in the great outdoors. As I said earlier, I think that I've only I've only touched a very small fraction of the geology of the United States. Um, I have seen mountains and splendid though they were in uh, Appalachia or Appalachia. There, there are different there are different type of geology to the kind of mountains or even canyons that you'll see out west the terrain that i most want to see is that terrain that just sort of blows your mind away it's it's the earth um cutting into itself and also protruding itself into the air um in ways that uh, i've never seen the the uk 
isn't greatly known for its sort of mountainous areas. You do have them. I mean, there's the Lake District, um, there's Snowdonia, there's Ben Nevis, which is the tallest mountain in the United Kingdom. Um, but by all accounts, they don't really have anything geologically on the, the kinds of things you're going to see out west. And I think that's 60% where my interests lie. And what type of experiences am I hoping to find? I'm hoping to find a history. You know, humans left a trail in this country. And I'm hoping to explore that. I'm exploring it right now through language in distant words. Um, but there's a, there's a kind of uh, parallel to that with uh, looking directly at the history and at the peoples and at what they, they were able to conjure up um, throughout America's great history. And, you know, for the most part, I focused on the, the kind of history that goes back sort of for 400 years to the, the, the days of the Puritans. But then, of course, there's the, the, the Western expansion that happened in the 19th century that takes it to a, a, a new level and, a, and to a new place. And so it's piecing that together, you know, in my own head. I, I have bits here and there, but seeing it and reading about it and putting all that together, oh, it's going to be marvelous. And I can't wait to make videos on this uh, just to add greater context, not only uh, for you, fine people, but for me. That's it for volume 50 of Ask a Brit. Thank you for tuning in and uh, join us for the next volume of Ask a Brit here in a couple of weeks' time when we will be discussing the theme of weird british place names so get your questions coming in about weird british place names it could be anything you know the spelling of weird british place names uh, place names that look like they should be pronounced a certain way but aren't uh, get those questions coming in i love all of that stuff and uh, at some point we'll do american uh, weird place names as well because there are a ton of those until next time have a great week and i will see you soon i won't see you'll see me it's in reverse bye <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode of Ask a Brit. Don't forget to hit my stupid little face to subscribe and please share this video with the world. Hit me up on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. And if you'd like to support this channel, please do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond.